Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my home. My name is Becky. I am so excited that you're here today. Well, it is Thursday morning. I'm piddling around the house trying to find a few things to do. I did have one quick Easter craft that I wanted to share with you before the Easter season is over. This may be something that you want to include in your DIY lineup. I'm not sure. It's very simple, very quick. Now, if you look down at the bottom of this video and you see that it's on the longer side, it's very possible that I found something else to add to it. But as of right now, my plan is to just do this one little quick craft and just make a quick 10 to 15 minute video out of it. Um, wanted to share with you that we do have some fun things coming up. Lily is coming home. Thank you, Jesus. She's coming home. Um, so we have a whole new house to decorate for her. Now, I don't know that we'll be able to do the whole decorate with me or at the very least we'll do a full home tour. I don't know, but if it's where we can, um, I, I hope to be able to do some decorate with me in her new home. Now, she's got the same style. She still wants the vintage. She wants the colors and everything, but she wants to make it just a little more mature than what her apartment was. So she's going to be changing some things up, but she's going to be using a lot of the same items that she already has. Um, what else do we have coming up? I want to do a spring tablescape in the next couple of weeks. I'm actually going to film it today, but I'm not going to release it till after Easter. So I want to do something fun on the table. But for right now, let's do this quick little craft. Um, let me get everything set up and then I'll be right back. So this craft is going to require a little bit of explaining <laughs> because it's uh, right now the way that I've got it to show you is a little bit janky. But I have done this craft before and it's really cute and it is... Um, Cute on the table is easy. It looks nice. Now, it's not going to be usable. You cannot, they're going to be little plates, and you cannot eat off of these plates, but you can decorate with them. You can put them up in your hutch. You can put them on your table. You just cannot eat off of them. But what it's going to be, so here comes the explaining part. Um, when I did the craft originally, I did it on a little porcelain or ceramic plate. The same plates that you get from the Dollar Tree that are a dollar, which now a dollar twenty-five. But I don't need to buy any more plates that I don't need. <laughs> so what I did to be able to show you how to do this project, I bought some plastic plates. Now just imagine this is a cute little ceramic plate. I looked over my whole house and I could not find a plain ceramic white plate anywhere. So we're gonna use this as an example, <laughs> but you get the point, you get the point. Plus for me, I have so much in storage out there. This is a lot more easily compacted and easily stored. So let's get to the project. So what I did is I went online and I printed a bunch of little images that I like. Now I printed these on plain white paper. It's not cardstock. It's not photo paper. It is plain white cheap printer paper because you want it to be kind of thin. These are the images that I picked. I'll show them to you real quick. And I just, basically what I did is I Google searched vintage Easter images. The first one that came up was this one. You may recognize this one. Hobby Lobby has a little ornament. And then when they saw that I liked the duck, Lots of little ducks and chicks came up, so I had plenty to choose from. And I right-clicked it, save image as, I saved it in my photos, and then when I got them all together, now I labeled them so that I could find them quickly, chick one, chick two, chick three, chick four. And then when I got ready to print them, I printed them in three and a half by five. Three and a half by five, yes. And then you get four to a page. So these are the images that I picked. There you go. Now, I printed 12 so I would have options, but obviously I only have a six piece place setting. So if I were to put these in my hutch, I would have plenty to choose from. I mean, I made 12 of them just so I would have them. The next thing you're gonna do, I forgot my scissors, but you get the point. You're going to cut this image out as close to the actual duck as you can. So for example, down here. See, he's got grass underneath him. I did cut out the paint cans in the egg, but
but I came up here around his little feet and I cut his little feet out. Now, this one, for example, I just cut all of it. So use your discretion on how you wanna cut it out. When you're cutting out, that when you're finding these little chicks and rabbits and things, if, if you're doing Easter for this, you can also do Halloween, you can do anything. But for Easter, all these little chicks have lots of feathers and you gotta go in, out, in, out, in, out. You know what I mean? Like follow the line of the image as best as possible. So here is one that I have cut out. I did keep his grass there a little bit. I didn't take all of her grass away. But this is the one that I have left. I've already made the other 11 because I wanted them to be dry for you guys for the for the video today. And then here's some more explaining. <laughs> Ideally, what you would need is a spray bottle with water in it. But I don't have a spray bottle with water in it. So we're going to use the tap. <laughs> <laughs> but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of Mod Podge. I got this from the Dollar Tree and it is matte. And the first thing I'm going to do now is this is messy. You're not going to come out of this unscathed, but I'm going to take the back of this duck. My paintbrush is a little stiff. Let me loosen it up just a little bit. And you're going to put some Mod Podge all over it, liberally, liter, liber, liberally, <laughs> is that a, put a liberal amount of Mod Podge on the back of your little chick, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna wet it. Again, ideally, you'd want to spray it with a spray bottle because this is gonna saturate it, but I mean, we're just gonna kind of, that's all, that t that's all it takes, this wet. And the reason that I wet it is because in the past, when I've dealt with Mod Podge, it gets real stiff and wrinkly. And I don't know, I just don't like, it doesn't lay perfectly right. So here is our imaginary beautiful dish. <laughs> and you're just gonna lay it right there in the center, just like that. And with it being wet, it's just going to kind of lay there perfectly. And I will tell you this. I told you to um, cut out the little chick's feet. Be careful because when the smaller pieces get wet, they will rip. And I have a couple that ripped, but I just glued them right back together. I just placed them right back together. We're going to take some more Mod Podge and just go right along the edge in the middle and just cover it up. That's all you have to do. That is all there is to it. Now, let me show you once I get this done. Hold on. I'm going to show you what they look like. And again, use your imagination because they do look really cute on a ceramic dish. This is just all we have. <laughs> all right. So, here are the 12 ducks and chicks that we have here. There's one. Two, three, and you can, they, they're perfect. They're stuck great. Now, if you look real close and you're trying to be, you know, a smarty pants in somebody's house, you can say, oh, I see a little bit of the Mod Podge there. It's very hard to see and it's, and it's not that important. It's okay. Just have fun. It's just gonna be something fun for somebody to look at when they come to your home for Easter. So anyway, you get the point. This is what they look like. And then we're gonna set them up on the table. I'm gonna show you what they look like. And what I also got was a pack of these as an underplate, and these are paper too. So don't come at me. I just don't have, a, I don't have the yellow plates for an underplate. But if I had beautiful yellow plates, I would use beautiful yellow plates. I just don't have any, so. We're gonna use Dollar Tree paper plates. So let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're here at our beautiful dining room table and I have my place setting ready to show you. Now these dishes, I am not gonna be covering up because these are my dishes that Monica sent me uh, a couple, last year and I love them and I'm enjoying them. But for demonstrational purposes, we're gonna use this as an underplate because I like the green 
going around the edge. Now, pretend this is a beautiful chintz, floral, ceramic, I don't know, <laughs> made in England, beautiful dish. Okay, let's just pretend. We're gonna sit that down on the top here. And then here are our beautiful handmade dishes with the finest porcelain. <laughs> and it's gonna go in the middle. So this is, well, it's hard for me to hold it up for you without risking breaking something, but I'm gonna set them all up. I think the grand ta -da is gonna be all of these beautiful chicks put together with this tablescape. Now these are specific to my tablescape. Obviously you pick whatever you want. Just the only thing I would suggest is that you pick an image that you can easily cut around because that's where it's gonna get a little difficult. Um, the Easter Bunny that I picked, there was lots of Easter Bunny images, but I had to pick one that I could cut around and it was really, it turned out really cute and I enjoyed them that year. And it was a really inexpensive DIY to do, really fun, easy, quick, and made a good little impact. So let me get all of these beautiful dishes set up and I'll show you what it looks like all put together. Here is everything put together in its entirety. And I think it is so cute. It's adorable. Now, of course, it would look better with real dishes, but, you know, it serves the purpose. It's cute. And I just love the images from the dishes with the centerpiece because it all goes together so well. That's why I say these are specific to me. If you have a tablescape that has bunnies, pick bunnies. If you have one that's got butterflies, pick butterflies. Whatever floats your boat. I was thinking, you know, I know I said you could do this for Halloween, Christmas, whatever. Wouldn't it be cute to do um, images, black and white images of like your family members for like Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or something like that? I think that would be cute. I mean... Do you know what I mean? Like an old picture of your parents or your grandparents and photocopy it and print it out on paper and ha wouldn't that be cute? I think that would be a neat little project also. All right, let me give you a close up of all of them. I was only able to pick six out of the 12, sadly, but that's okay. Maybe one year we can do the hutch with them I think next year I'm gonna go a completely different route with Easter. I'm gonna go back to some of my more neutral colors because, I don't know, I just wanna do something a little different next year. So I decided that I did want to squeeze one more thing into this video. It should not take long. It is a rainy day today. It's Saturday. Excuse my face. I am not going to put makeup on. I'm, this is just a relaxing day for me. I know it doesn't look like it's rainy outside from behind me, but I think the rain is just starting to clear out and the sun's starting to pop out, but it is the perfect day to craft. So I shared with you a couple of videos ago that I went to an antique store and I found this little book and I was, I wasn't really able to find a good spot in the house to decorate with it for Easter, but I still really like it or not. I only paid like, I think $4. Yeah, I paid $4 for it. The graphics are really pretty on the inside and um, it's just so cute and vintage and I liked it a lot. So one of you guys sent me a little message, or I think it was just a comment, Trisha, and she said, hey, I have that same book, and I made a banner out of it. And I said, well, would you mind sending me a picture of it if you don't mind sharing it with me? Because I think that's a great idea. And she did, she sent me, and, I'll, and I'm doing this with her permission, here is a picture of the banner that Trisha made. It's so cute. And I was so inspired by her idea. So I thought, I'm going to try that. So, but what I wanted to do, I decided that I don't quite, I don't think I want to cut my book up just yet. And I know I can copy the pages and do the same thing. But I thought, I already have these graphics printed they're already in my hand, they're already made. So why not do the same concept that Trisha did, but use the graphics that I already have at my fingertips. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the same idea that Trisha did with her banner, but I'm gonna use my graphics. But 
again, you could if you find an old book that's falling apart that you want to give a new life to, this is a great idea, and I thought it was just so clever of her. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take each of these little graphics, and I'm going to cut them out. I have this handy-dandy little paper cutter so that I make sure that all of my corners and straight lines are straight and perfect. And then I have this little book here. Because this paper is so flimsy, because I did tell you to print it out on plain printer paper because of the last project, this is just a little pad of cardstock that I got. It looks like I got it at Tuesday morning, judging from the sticker. But it's just lots of Easter graphics, just cute little graphics. And I'm going to use that as a background. So I'm going to cut out the paper version and then cut the background out just a little bigger. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. So here would be the background of the cardstock. You'll see this line going down the middle. And that is to make sure that I have this little pennant shape perfectly even to the to the paper and you guys will be proud of me because i measured and, and did all the things to make it perfect <laughs> so then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take my glue stick my image and we're just going to glue them on there now i'm going to real quick go ahead and cut all of these out so i'll have them done but you get the idea if you want to if you have one of these definitely use it if not just use a ruler to make sure that your lines are straight as possible I'll let you watch me do one real quick, just, just in case I'm trying to over explain it and you don't quite pick up what I'm laying down because sometimes I do tend to over explain things. <laughs> Some of these are going to be smaller than the others just because they're just random graphics that I found online. They're not necessarily all from the same source, so they're different. Um, like this one, I could probably come in a little bit closer and tighten that up just a little bit. But that's basically what I'm trying to tell you to do is to just cut it out in squares. Now, I do want these to all be the same size because that, that's just going to look weird if it's not. So, this one I cut out um, already and I'm just going to kind of trace that along. And then I'm going to use that as a pattern. And cut out. I don't know how many I'm going to do. I was thinking maybe six would be enough. Of course... I have a lot more graphics than six, but um, I think six would be a long enough pennant for me. So anyway, so here I have it. Now this is two-sided, so I'm gonna turn it around on this side because I like this color a little better. And then find just a pretty little graphic to go on there. And then I'm gonna put my glue down. Can you see me, what I'm doing? And then that's it. That's all there is to it. So simple. And if you want to cut holes, like punch holes at the top, and do an in and out type of motion, you can. That is so crooked. My goodness. I didn't measure that very well. Let's try it again. It's still a little wet. Sorry. Okay. If you want to do that, you can. But... The picture that Trisha sent me, it seemed like she took some ribbon and just went across the top. So I do have some ribbon here and it came from the Dollar Tree. It's kind of on the stiff side, so I don't know how well it's going to hang. But judging, the best I could tell from the picture, it looked like maybe it was folded in half. And I'm going to go in here. I just kind of, my, with just my fingers, press that down in half and it kind of stayed pretty well but um, you could iron it if you want to. And then just go along in there, and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there, and then that's gonna be my banner, just like that. And I think that's pretty self-explanatory, should be easy to follow, but um, I'll show, I'll be back in just a minute and I'll show you as I'm gluing one, just to be on the safe side. But for now, I'm just gonna put together six or seven of these. So I have seven made all together. So we have what I saw is that way it might lay a little easier because if it's even on each side, like three on one side, three on the other, it might not lay quite right. So I thought if there was one in the middle, then it would have kind of like a, 
I don't know if that, it, that's just how my brain was thinking, that it might have something heavier to pull it down to make it look like a, a pennant. So I'm gonna lay these out in the order that I want them. And then I'm going to, I've got my low temperature glue gun here. And we're just gonna start gluing them down. I think that's, that's the way I wanna do it. So I have this ribbon, like I told you, I bent it down the middle. And I'm just going to, let's get the middle of the ribbon. We'll start with that. And we'll get the image in the middle. And I'm just gonna glue it here on the top and on the back too. And definitely use low temp because we are not about that lifestyle of burning our skin off with a hot glue gun. Let's see. See if I can do this without my glue drying up on me. <laughs> All right, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but it would be nice if I could get it there. All right, so there, there we go. I just used my knee to kind of prop it up there and it, it worked pretty well. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down three on one side, three on the other until I've got my banner. And then um, I'm going to do, do this off camera because I may struggle just a little bit. And then I'll be back in just a minute. I do want to say this real quick. So there's a little space between the two pennants or each pennant. I want that to be glued down as well. So when I put my glue down, I'm just gluing all the way down. I'm not skipping any. I'm not just putting the glue on the pennant. I'm gluing it all the way down so that there's not any puffy gaps. Does that make sense? I just want it all to be folded in half nicely is what I'm trying to say. So I'm all done with my banner and I have to say I am quite smitten. I think it is absolutely adorable. I am so glad, here it is. I am so glad that Trisha gave me this idea. I think this turned out so cute. Now, um, more actually it turned out better than what I thought it would because I had quite large shoes to fill um, in creating this because Trisha did such a good job with hers. But I love it. I think it turned out perfectly. And I can't wait to see where I hang it. I already have the perfect spot picked out. I'll end the video with me hanging it up for you. Thank you for taking a few minutes of your day to hang out with me and to craft with me and maybe even just to chit chat. It just means the whole world. Until next time, I love you all. Happy Easter and I'll see you later. Bye.